This is part 3 of a series about this Japanese phone that runs Windows 7. I've had a great time trying this phone out and switching it to English. In the second part, I put the phone through its paces. I really enjoy messing about with these sort of unusual devices. Now, I want to do a teardown. I can't help it. I have to see what's inside. It can be risky, and you never know what can happen, but also taking something unusual apart for the first time is really exciting. This phone works like it's two devices in one. Something new I found, if I start Windows and then switch back to phone mode and then power the phone off, the phone keeps running Windows, even with the phone side switched off. I suspect there's an ARM CPU running the phone as well as the x86 CPU inside. So let's have a look.
That was awesome. There are some interesting chips in here. The Intel Atom Z600 CPU was easy to find. This chip is tiny. It's the size of a thumbnail. I also found the ARM CPU in the front section of the phone. Also on the front section are these two Samsung chips. They look like flash memory, which means they'd be 16 gigabytes each, totaling 32 gigabytes that Windows uses for its storage. That does however mean that the flash storage is connected to the window side of the phone through the slider ribbon cable. I'm going to look up some of the chips to find out more about them. There's a Toshiba chip here. I'm not really sure what this one does. Next to it is an Atheros chip, which is part of Qualcomm, so that's probably the Wi-Fi. Over here is an Intel chip, and this is probably the motherboard's chipset. This chip provides interfaces for things like USB and HDMI. There's a Hynix chip here. They're known for making flash memory, but I think I've already identified the main flash memory being the Samsung chips, so I don't know what this one is being used for. I'm really taking some guesses here. Some of them are more certain though, such as this ALC270. This is a Realtek sound chip. No doubt Windows would have sound drivers installed for this chip. The trackball is rather interesting. It looks like there's four cylindrical magnets that spin when you move the trackball around. And this bottom section contains magnetic sensors which would detect how the trackball is moving. It's time to do reassembly, which should be fairly straightforward. It's just a matter of reversing the process, right? Well, it's back together, but it no longer powers up. I'm getting no response at all. These moments are like a punch in the guts. The first thing I think of is that ribbon cable through the slide. The pitch on the connector pins are tiny, and the connectors were bending slightly as I was removing them. If something like this has broken, it's basically game over. There were also two moments during reassembly I remember being a little bit unsure. The two coax cables are colour coded, and I couldn't exactly remember which one went where. And the tiny flat cable connecting the subboard to the main board, I wasn't sure which way around it went. I'd recorded the whole disassembly, and I really should have used that to put it back together instead of just guessing. I took the phone apart again, and sure enough, when I compared to the disassembly, this tiny flat cable was around the wrong way. I put it back together the correct way and reassembled the phone. Okay, fortunately, with that cable fixed, the phone is now turning on again. Hopefully everything still works and the window side still starts up. That mistake could potentially have shorted something out. That's a risk I need to be more aware of in the future. I'll remember this video so I don't get too carried away next time. I really appreciate you watching my videos and I hope you enjoyed this one. Please like and share. Your support really helps me keep this channel going. Thank you. If you do Patreon, you'll find a few extras as well. Thanks for watching.